Hi guys, Chippy News have what I believe is a comedy show, but I've always been under the impression that comedy involves laughs. I don't know about you, but I wasn't laughing through this piece. So an American guy who I believe is a Brexiteer compared the UK's departure from the European Union to his own divorce. Yeah, the idea that you can separate and still have a warm and friendly relationship, but you don't want to get back together again. He was responding to news that there are fewer and fewer people supporting Brexit and to the idea that Labour would like to undo some of the damage. Anyway, have a listen to this comedy. Whichever, I think we can all agree Brexit hasn't been, you know, a good, hasn't had good results. Yeah. No, you're saying that. Where does that come No, no, from? I mean, no, I'm Nigel, just like, even Nigel Farage argues that it hasn't been done right. So we have these advantages now that arguably the government hasn't taken advantage of. No, so it hasn't been Im implemented well. You can argue it. I think it's been unbelievable. It's, a, it's, it's of course, it's going to be difficult and painful. And nobody mentioned the difficulty and the painfulness, but of course... You what? Nobody mentioned the difficulty and painfulness? Nobody mentioned it. When? What, what planet is this guy living on? The Remainers, before the Brexit vote, said it would be a disaster for the economy. It'd be a disaster for Britain. After the vote, in the run-up to the UK leaving the European Union, they said it would be a bad idea to have a no-deal Brexit. It would it'd be a bad idea to leave the European Union and the single market. And they were proven right. That's why so many people have turned on Brexit. You're going to have painfulness. You break up, you got the... But, I, but the thing is, I think people are like, well, what have, we, what have we got out of this? Nothing. Everything's more expensive. Queues at the airports are longer. Yeah. We haven't got what we want. This isn't what we wanted. So now, obviously, people are starting to think, mm, maybe this wasn't the, yeah. the best idea. But, but I would argue, Lewis, that... The, um one of the interesting things here is how maybe the sting has gone out of it. There was a lot of passion mm. on both sides. And I think yeah. now people are just over that toxic element and just want to get on with making... Well, that's what the article good. says. But yeah. that doesn't mean that most people want to go back with Europe. It reminds me of my No, no, but that's not what the article is saying. I but know. they are saying but that they want to have fixed the issues that have been yeah. erased. Here's a different approach from this story. Okay. Number one is this, is I got divorced. Yeah, and, we know, we know, blah, blah, blah. And if you asked me, and you said, Lewis, do you want to have warmer relations? Do a shot at home. <laughs> Lewis is talking about his divorce. <laughs> do you want to have warmer relations with your ex-wife? I would say, yeah, I'd like to have warmer relations. If she, if they, she asked her, would you like to have a warmer relationship with your ex-husband? She would say, yes. Do you want to get back together again with him? No way. Okay. It's a terrible analogy because the UK was not married to the European Union. A better analogy would be gym membership. The UK was a member of a gym. It decided to end that gym membership. Um, people within the family <laughs> told uh, whoever was in charge of the gym membership, the father, the mother, whoever it was, Look, we need to leave the gym. We, we need to end the membership. What we're going to do is we're going to work out at home. We're going to save a huge amount of money. We're not going to pay our membership and we're going to work out at home. Then somebody was saying, wait, wait, wait a minute, we live in a small flat. And some others in the family were saying, it doesn't matter if we live in a small flat. We're going to, wait. We're going to be able to fit all our gym equipment in and we're going to be working out just as well as we are in the gym, even better. And then after a few days, a few weeks, people realize, uh, actually, it's not working out. <laughs> we don't have any space and I'm not able to do the exercises like I was before. Everyone's working out together. It's getting a bit smelly in here. There's a queue for the shower and it's, it's not a very nice experience. So some decide maybe it's actually better we rejoin the gym. Yes, we pay our membership, but we get a better level of service. Now, others are saying, well, what we can do is we can be part of the gym, but not be a member. <laughs> we can still use the equipment, but not be a member and actually have the same benefits of being a member without actually having to pay the membership. <sighs> it's not like a divorce. That's what this is. Secondly, it's in The Guardian. It's a lie. It's a lie. The Guardian is reporting on data, is reporting on a survey. It's not because it's in The Guardian, it's a lie. Like, what, is this supposed to be comedy? I'm not sure if this is supposed to be comedy. He's supposed, oh, it's in The Guardian, it's a lie. Like, I have criticized The Express, but I've actually gone into some of the articles and said, look, 
the art the problem with the express is sometimes the headline contradicts the content of the of the article the what's in the article contradicts the headline why because it said 50 48 percent the largest group of people yeah. want to be closer to europe right to europe no it says here 52 versus 27 no it does not yeah it says 52 percent public <laughs> no we'd like to have a closer relationship with the eu with only 12 percent they wanted a more distance one okay more distant one closer but it says who would you like to, who is the most important person for peace prosperity yeah. and stability 48 yeah. percent said the eu yeah but 52 percent said a combination of you, the USA and and the yeah, but it says that you, you're the, the one who's putting the 27 and the 25 together. It doesn't yeah. say oh, and everybody else. It says here yeah. 27. I don't even know what they're arguing about now. So this was a bit pointless, wasn't it? This was supposed to be comedy. This is Brexit comedy, Brexiteer comedy. Now the, this guy you see on the screen here, I believe he's also a Brexiteer. He was trying to su suggest at the beginning of this that. Well, you know, Brexit, there's nothing wrong with Brexit. It's just the government aren't implementing it correctly. A bit like Nigel Farage's excuse. Brexit is a disaster because the government aren't implementing it correctly. Well, we have a Brexiteer government. The Prime Minister is a Brexiteer. He was part of the campaign to leave the European Union. Like, Brexiteers have constantly said, if we had the right people in charge, then we'd be able to get the Brexit that we voted for. Well, Boris Johnson was in charge and Boris Johnson was part of the Leave campaign. Liz Truss was in charge and she was a convert to, uh, to Brexit. And Brexiteers seem to, be, seem to have been very happy with that. And then finally, you had Rishi Sunak, who was a member of the Leave campaign, campaigned for Leave. And, he, and he's a Brexiteer. But we constantly hear that... The wrong people are in charge for some reason. Who would be the right person? I can guarantee you if Kemi Badenoch or Suella Braveman were in charge, you'd still have the same problems. Because the problem is Brexit itself, not the idiot in charge. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.